All right, guys, welcome to the Anatomy 2 review for uh, for midterm at Daytona State College. We're going to start off with the midterm. It's very simple. It's just endocrine and cardiovascular physiology. So when we talk about the endocrine system, what is the master gland in the body? The hypothalamus. And with the hypothalamus, we're going to talk about the hypothalamus in relationship to the pituitary gland. What is the stock that holds them together? Infundibulum. The infundibulum. It has the word fun right in it. So the infundibulum holds the pituitary gland, which is in part of the sila turcica of the sphenoid bone, to the hypothalamus. So when we talk about the pituitary gland, we can divide it into a front and a back. The anterior pituitary is called the adenohypophysis, and the posterior is called the neurohypophysis. The posterior pituitary gland produces no hormones itself, but stores two hormones produced by the hypothalamus, which are what? Antidiuretic hormone and... Oxytocin. So oxytocin, OT, and antidiuretic hormone, ADH, are going to be produced by the hypothalamus and stored in the posterior pituitary gland. Which one has an effect of strong uterus contractions and the letdown of milk? Oxytocin. Oxytocin. And which one tells your kidneys to hang on to water? ADH. Antidiuretic hormone. Beautiful. So from there, when we talk about the anterior pituitary glands, um, we only have, what, five, six, seven hormones? Let's go over them. Our gonadotropins are what two? FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone, which influences testosterone and estrogen productions. So when we talk about FSH and LH, follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone, they, for the female, it does the maturation of the follicles, which produces the estrogen, and it tells us when we're going to release our eggs during ovulation. And for the males, it talks about sperm production, maturation, and testosterone production. When we talk about the next hormone, growth hormone, what does growth hormone affect? What is the target organ? Bones. Uh, bones. 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 Everything. Every tissue in the body is influenced by go, uh, growth hormone. If we have too much as we're developing, we get giantism. If we have too little while we're growing, we get dwarfism. If we have too much while we're not growing, what do we get? Acromegaly. Acro we get thicker. We get thick orbits, thick jaws, thick hands. Okay, uh, It's very painful. From there, we talked about thyroid stimulating hormone, which stimulates the thyroid gland. So that takes us to the model. In the cat or in the model, are we going to open up the head? No. So any questions about identifying the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, the hypothalamus, is all going to be from a picture. But if we start talking about the cat or a model, we can see the thyroid gland, we can see the thymus gland, we can see the pancreas going across, we can identify the adrenal glands, we can do the gonads, whether it's female or male gonads, we can see these on the model or on the cat. Anything with the brain, just know it from a picture, okay? Just know it from the picture. So we talk about thyroid stimulating hormone, it influences the thyroid gland. What are the three hormones the thyroid gland produces? Number one, which one, which two influences metabolism? T3, T3 and T4. T4. Triadenal thyroxine and thyroxine. <coughs> That's your metabolic clock. And the last one influences calcium levels. It lowers blood calcium levels. And which is that? Calcitonin. Calcitonin lowers blood calcium levels. Where does it put the calcium? In the bone. In the bone. Puts it in the bone. Now, the parathyroid uh, glands, which are four glands behind the thyroid gland, it does the opposite of calcitonin. It increases blood calcium levels with this hormone called parathormone, or parathyroid hormone. Okay? Back to the anterior pituitary. We had uh, prolactin, which does what? <laughs> Tells the breast to start producing milk. We have ACTH, adrenal corticotropic hormone, which does what? Stimulates the adrenal, adrenal cortex. cortex. So when we talk about the adrenal glands, the suprarenal glands that are located above the kidneys, and remember on the cat they're kind of behind the kidneys superiorly, the cortex does the outside, the medulla is the inside. What are the two medulla hormones? Epinephrine, epinephrine and norepinephrine. norepinephrine. The other name for epinephrine is adrenaline, 80% and 20%, and that is your sympathetics. But that's not what ACTH does. ACTH does your uh, simulation of your mineral coracoids, your glucocoracoids, and your gonadal coracoids, also called your androgenic hormones. Your mineral coracoids do your minerals like aldosterone for sodium reabsorption. Your glucocoracoids were your steroids. They were talking um, 
cortisol, hydrocortisone, cortisones. And our gonadal corticoids, our secondary sex hormones, would be estrogens and some male hormones, some androgenic hormones. Okay? Beautiful. What other anterior pituitary hormones do we have? Melanocyte stimulating hormone, which tells your melanocytes to produce more melanin, which makes your skin pigment darker. Correct? Were there any others we talked about? Hmm? We talked about melatonin. We, we asked, melatonin is pineal gland. We can't do that one. We'll talk about the pancreas in a second. So for the anterior pituitary, we have our growth hormone. We have our uh, gonadotropins, follicle-stimulating hormone, and luteinizing hormone. We have ACTH. We have prolactin. We talked about melanocyte-stimulating hormone also. Okay? Good, good, good. Uh, posterior pituitary, to recap, we're what to? Oxytocin and antidiuretic hormone. All right, so let's go to the rest of them. We said our pancreas is in our abdominal cavity, and it runs transversely underneath the greater omentum to the small intestine of the duodenum, and we're going to have it release two hormones affecting sugar. What are the two hormones? Insulin, Insulin. Insulin. Insulin and glucagon. Insulin and glucagon. So which one lowers blood sugar levels? Insulin. 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 So glucagon increases blood sugar levels, and what is sugar called in its storage form? Glucose. Glucose. Oh, glycogen. Glycogen. Sugar in its normal form is called glucose. glucose. We have glucose, glycogen, insulin, and glucagon. Now again, is the endocrine, is the pancreas endocrine and exocrine? Yes. Yes, yes. so the exocrine functions are going to be for like bicarbonate, pancreatic amylase, and pancreatic contents such as, oh, I don't know, the pancreatic duct releasing bile from the gallbladder would be things to help aid fat metabolism or carbohydrate metabolism with your pancreatic amylase. So that's easy enough. The thymus gland in front of the chest, behind the sternum, in front of the heart, is greater in size in infants and small people, and small if not gone as an adult, it does produce what hormone? Thymosin. Thymosin, or thy coming from thymopoiesin, and it influences T lymphocyte production for your T cells. Okay? Or immunity. We already talked about the adrenal glands. We already talked about the gonads. Again, the male gonad is the testes, and it produces testosterone. The female gonads are the ovaries. It produces estrogens, and then later on it produces progesterone. Later on we'll talk about that the uterus will also produce pro uh, progesterone too. Okay? Uh, was there anything else we talked about with the um, endocrine system? We mentioned the pineal gland. The pineal gland was located where? In, it's in the epithalamus, behind the hypothalamus, superior to the superior colliculi of the four quadrigemina of the midbrain. Right? Something like that. Right? Okay. So it's located in the brain, in the back, above the cerebellum, above the midbrain. All right? And it's going to release melatonin, which is the tone for your sleep, and influencing your circadian rhythm. It has to do with sleep cycles. It also has to do with migratory features in birds. That's how they know the days are getting shorter to fly south. Okay? Good, good, good. So let's talk about the blood. When we talk about blood, we can divide blood into two parts, formed elements and plasma. The formed elements are roughly 45% of blood. The plasma is 55% of blood. And what three things make up your formed elements? Red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Your red blood cells are called RBCs or erythrocytes. Your white blood cells were WBCs or leukocytes. And your platelets were for clotting. Came from what cell? Megakaryocyte. A megakaryocyte. Very good. When we think about plasma, think about Gatorade. Because what's in Gatorade? Electrolytes. Electrolytes. Water, sugar, salts, um, uh, um, hormones, um, waste products. Those aren't in Gatorade. But you get the, you get the idea. Okay? You get the idea. Um, when we talk about red blood cells, do they have a nucleus? No. no. So they are enucleus. Without a nucleus, do they have DNA? No. They don't no. have DNA, can they undergo mitosis? No. no. So they always have to be constantly replenished. So what makes new red blood cells? Bone marrow. Bone marrow. Red bone marrow. How long does blood cells last? Four months. Four months. About 100, 120 days, about three months. Maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit less. Okay? That's your red blood cells. Can we have too many red blood cells? Yeah. Yes. What's that called? Hemo. Polycythemia. Can we have too few red blood cells? Yeah. What's that called? 
anemia. And can we have different types of anemia? Yeah. Yes. Vitamin B12 is called pernicious. pernicious. We have sickle, sickle cell. cell. We have we have iron, iron deficiency. Um, hemoglobin or hemoglobin deficiency. Hemoglobin deficiency. We have iron deficiency. We have a whole bunch of types of deficiencies of red blood cells. How do we check for anemia? Yeah. Hematocrit levels. Hematocrit levels. We do a hematocrit. Okay. How do we check for white blood cell counts? We do a white blood cell count. Okay. Can we have too many white blood cells just because we're sick? Yeah. What's that called? Because we're just because we're sick. Leukocytosis. Can we have too many white blood cells count because we have a malignant tumor of lymphatic tissue? Yeah. And that is leukemia. leukemia. Can we have too few white blood cells? Yeah. Okay, let's say we have HIV. So we could have leukopenia. That's too few white blood cells. Okay? Good, good, good. When we talked about the white blood cells, we could divide it into two parts, granular and agranular, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Our granular were three. We had our basophils, our eosinophils, and our neutrophils. Which one was the most common white blood cell? Neutrophils. It's going to look like they are multinucleated, but they're not. It's one nucleus, but they're multilobular. Okay, so they have many lobes to them, and they're going to be granular, increasing in acute infections and bacterial infections. The next we had eosinophils. They go up during parasitic infections, and they are going to be stained red or an orangish hue to them, right? It almost looks like their nucleus is wearing sunglasses. Okay? If we have our basophils, our basophils are going to be very small, very granular, very dark, and they're going to go up during histamine and heparin reactions, okay, inflammatory processes. The next one we have are our agranular. We have two of them, our monocytes and our lymphocytes. Which one are very big? Monocytes. 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 Their nucleus looks like a kidney bean, and we have a very lot of visible cytoplasm. The cytoplasm is going to be pale blue, and the nucleus is going to be large. We see a lot of cytoplasm. Our lymphocytes, the second most prevalent white blood cell, is small in size compared to the monocyte, almost the size of a red blood cell, a little bit bigger, and the cytoplasm is very tiny, visible, either all the way around or like a crescent moon, but the nucleus is going to be very round, very large nucleus in comparison to the whole cell uh, size of the cell. Okay? It's going to go up in uh, viral infections, and this is going to be associated with more your um, antibodies, more your antibodies. Okay? Good, good, good. We talked a little about blood typing. We have type A, we have type B, we have type AB, and have type O. And we also talked about the RH factor. Are RH positive women ever a problem? No. no. Are RH negative women a problem? Yes. yes. If she gives birth to a positive baby, her body becomes sensitized to positive antigens, and she says the next time she develops a fetus in her womb that is positive, the baby will die. The, the body will turn against it, and it will destroy the baby's blood. Okay, so can she get a shot of Rogan and turn that off? Yes. Mm -hmm. First trimester at the end, of the end of the pregnancy. Okay, so there's no problem to the baby for RH negative women. All right, can an RH negative mother have an RH negative baby and have no problems? Yes. 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 But it's always the second positive child. All right, unless there is a miscarriage somewhere along the way. Okay, so that is blood. When we talked about the blood vessels, Leaving the heart, we can divide the aorta into several parts. We have the ascending aorta going out of the heart. We have the arch of the aorta arching. We have the descending thoracic and then the descending abdominal aortas. What are the first, the only two branches off the ascending aorta? Subclave. Ascending Earth. aorta. Oh, ascending. The right and left coronary arteries are going to come off the ascending aorta, mm -hmm. feeding the right and left side of the heart. Coming off the branch, of the uh, arch of the aorta, we have the first branch, which is what? Brachiocephalic trunk. The second branch is the left, left common carotid. And the third branch is the left, left subclavian. subclavian. Remember, this is different in the human and the cat. So in the human, it's brachiocephalic trunk, right common carotid, uh, I'm sorry, brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, and left subclavian. In the cat, there's only two branches. There's the brachiocephalic artery and the left common, the left subclavian. The brachiocephalic artery in the cat divides into the right common carotid, the left common carotid, and the right subclavian arteries. So the cat is different than the human. So if we go from the arch of the aorta down the descending thoracic aorta, what are the main branches off the descending thoracic aorta? Celiac. Celiac. Trunk. Descending thoracic.